So today I've been building an email client with Next.js and Postgres, and I want to walk through the demo and show some cool things in the code. So I have my app open here. I've got my inbox, and you can see clicking between everything feels really fast, and that's because we want to take advantage of caching as much as possible. So I have an inbox, sent mails, uh, you know, some different folders as well too. When I'm looking in my inbox, I can click on an individual email for any given folder. If I want, I can make a new email. So let's say I want to make this to Lee and testing, hello, I'll send this. And then it revalidates all the data and we see it redirect here and pop this open. And I can delete this as well if I want to. So that's just a quick run through, but I want to talk through some of the interesting bits here and walk through the code kind of step by step and talk about uh, how I built this. It was actually really fun. So let me start with the uh, the entry. I started with Create Next App. Just built a completely fresh Create Next App, scaffolded Tailwind, scaffolded out PMPM, PM, and set up my configuration. Pretty basic app. And then I actually went to V0. So I started in V0, and it got me pretty far after only seven uh, iterations on my initial prompt. So I was prompting basically a three column layout, folders on the left, in the middle, the current list of emails inside of the folder, and then on the right, the actual viewing of the email. So this helped me get a good start with my Tailwind code. So I took that and again, I had scaffolded out this config, scaffolded out a basic next config, and then in my root layout, I'm basically just wrapping the application, setting up some dark mode styles, installing a font, nothing too wild here. So let's first look at the shell. So the the shell of a folder, you see this email empty view. So when I click on a folder, there's no email selected. And I'm basically showing nothing here, but then the layout for this has a folder column that's an async component, so this is a server component, an email column that grabs the param from the URL, and then the children. Now, this is gonna be important in a second when we talk about scroll position. Um, so, what this means is that everything on this page is part of the shared layout, except for this right third most column. So when I click, for example, on Lee at Vercel.com, just this bit on the right, just this third column is actually part of a different route. So F for folder slash name slash ID. And then we have this page. And this is the specific bit of UI that's rendered as a child of just that layout. So for example, one of the cool things that this enables is if I pull this up here and I'm scrolling down, I click on John Doe. Notice how the scroll position doesn't reset between these because the layout doesn't re-render, even though we're updating the UI and we're getting new information. And this was basically all I had to do. Originally, this was re-rendering when I wasn't using a layout, lifted it up to the layout, done. That's all you need to do. So that's a nice little UI touch there. Um, let's talk about this specific page. So inside of this page, we're grabbing the email that's inside of this folder, given the folder name and the email ID. Uh, we render this toolbar and then we render the individual contents of the email. So what does this look like? Getting the email. Well, I'm using Vercel Postgres, so it's basically just vanilla Postgres. I'm actually not even using an ORM, I'm just doing um, SQL through tag template literals here. So I can uh, use any values I want to pass in, like the folder name and the email ID with also making sure those are sanitized to prevent against SQL injections. So I you know, get all the emails in my folder here and I return it back. And that's basically all this part is. And we have moved the data fetching down into the actual component and the page at this level. So if we go back up to the layout, well, how do we get all of these different emails? For example, how do we get all the emails in the folder? Well, there's this email list column. This is the second column. And inside of here, we have a very similar thing. Get emails for folder. We pass in the folder name. We iterate over all of the different emails. And then this is just JSX basically. Going in here kind of looks similar. The only thing that's different is there's a conditional check if we're in the set folder versus the you know, any of the other folders, sense kind of a special folder. Now, I realized as I was going over this, I probably need to also 
have a better join here to have both the sender email as well as the recipient email, but we can get to that in a future iteration. Um, so that's that. And one of the nice things here is that because caching is built into the Next.js app router, I don't really have to do anything. And by default, all of this is going to be cached. Now, the nice thing about this is for my email client in this instance, it feels really fast when I'm clicking around. And you can imagine that when I get a new email, I would essentially have an API that that email server could hit to revalidate the data and show a new email. So let me show what the revalidation process looks like by starting to talk about what the form looks like. So I click the email and this redirects us to this sent slash new route that has a form. So this is also using that same shared layout. So just this third column is being rendered. The other part of the layout comes from the layout file. And inside of here, we're doing a couple things. Uh, one, we're getting all of the email addresses, which I'll show in a second, which again, it was just SQL. Um, and then we have a form and the form takes a server action. And inside this form, we have who you're sending it to, the subject and some information. Now you're gonna notice a couple things here. One, as I start typing, I get a type ahead here, a combo box that allows me to use the keyboard and navigate between the components I want. And critically, this is aware of all of the emails in my database, but I could also type some new email at gmail.com and it's still an input. So I'm still able to use this value and really big shout out to React ARIA components here for making this super easy to do. Um, it was pretty simple actually to get set up to take the values I fetched on the server and then pass them in as items in the lists box component and then kind of style this with Tailwind to match the look that I had going in the application. So that was actually really easy to do, which is nice. So I can, let's say, pick one here. I can write a subject, my subject. But actually, one thing that's interesting is this has both client and server side validation. So if I try to submit right now, it's gonna say this field is required because I've added the proper required field on the HTML element, but we can say my subject, we can say this is a test. Now I could go click the button in the top right, but another fun thing I added was command enter to actually submit the form. And this was a fun one. Basically I just have the text area, but then on key down, I'm looking for specifically doing the, the meta key or the command key, command enter. And then this one took me a bit to figure out, but on the, on the events, I'm calling up to the form, not in this component. And then I'm saying, you know what, actually produce a submit event. Because if you produce a submit event, much like this button here that has a type of submit, that's actually going to submit the form. So there's three inputs in this form. There is the um, there's the person you're sending it to, there's the subject, and there's the body. And when I submit the form, I'm able to actually go over, call the server action, and then I validate that input on the server as well too using Zod. Now, this is just a demo, so I've kind of hard-coded me as the logged in user here with the sender ID of one. Um, and I haven't uh, worked with transactions in a while, so that was fun, but with Postgres, I'm able to start my transaction run a bunch of different queries in here based on the way that my data is structured. So it basically looks like this. Users can send and receive emails. They can have multiple folders. Folders can have multiple emails. And then an email can also be in multiple folders. So we've got a nice relational database going here that makes this pretty easy to set up. So when I'm adding in new information, I got to, for example, get the recipient ID. If it doesn't exist, I got to put that user in the database basically. I insert a new email, I get the ID of the sent folder, I add the new email into the sent folder, and then I, if everything went great, I can commit this transaction. If for some reason something didn't go great, I can roll it back, and then I can roll back all of these commands at once. And then if successful, I do two things here. One is I revalidate all of the data on my page. I could get more granular with this if I wanted to, but since I'm doing multiple queries here, if I, for example, added a new email into the set folder, 
that needs to update the data in this component. It also needs to update this badge on the left. So I could use cache tags. In this instance, I just revalidated all data. Uh, and then I actually redirect to the newly created email as well too. And I'm able to get the newly created ID back from my uh, SQL query. So I can redirect to that. Now, a cool thing about server actions, you might've noticed there was no client side event handlers here. So this is actually not dependent on JavaScript. So if I go over here, let's say I want to I'll close that. Uh, let me disable JavaScript. And let's say we want this to go to, now you'll notice when I type Lee, it's not gonna give me that nice dropdown before because we don't actually have that available. So this is new email at test.com and so my subject, new email, and we'll submit. And you'll notice there was the browser loading spinner here because I had to go to the server and still works even though there's no JavaScript and we see everything get updated as we would expect. So that's really nice. I love to see the progressive enhancement here. I'll go ahead and enable JavaScript. I also wanted to, I guess I can briefly mention kind of how the code base is structured. So I opted for the throw everything in the app folder because you can, <laughs> uh, because you can collate file, co-locate files. I said, you know what? We're just gonna dump everything in here. So not only do I have all of my components in here, some of these fetch data, some of these don't. Um, I have my actions, my server actions, which is sending an email and then deleting an email as well too. Um, I have all the different queries and the types for those queries inside of here. Um, a couple small utilities just for formatting, but I've just decided to put it all inside of here um, as well as just SVG icons that I've grabbed as well too. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much the application. It was really fun to click around and build this and kind of show some of these patterns like maintaining scroll position and progressive enhancement. And uh, really it was a lot of fun to work with, especially starting from V0. So hopefully this was interesting. Let me know if you'd like to see more content like this, but uh, yeah, peace.